Okay, we're going to do another example here, another Venn diagram of a categorical syllogism. This time we'll use two particular statements, something like this. Some students are millionaires, some students are women, and therefore some women are not millionaires. The question is, do these two premises provide enough information to absolutely guarantee that conclusion? Again, we can do a Venn diagram. It'll start off with three circles overlapping. And we're again going to use the upper premise to guide us on how to label the top circles. Top left, top left, top right, top right. And then we have W here down at the bottom. As long as these are both particular or both um, universal statements, it doesn't matter what you do first. The picture's going to look the same. It won't matter. If one was universal and one was particular, I do the universal first. In this case, it doesn't matter. I can start with the second or the first. I'll start with the first. Some S or M. But focusing on the S and the M circles, I would expect to see an X somewhere in this SM overlap. And you'll notice there's a line cutting that area in half. That'll happen occasionally. If you know you need to put an X somewhere in an area and there's a line cutting it in half, put the X right there on the line. What that means is the X's might be on this side, might be on that side, or maybe both. You don't know. We're not given enough information to absolutely guarantee. All we know is there's an X floating around there someplace. For the second premise, some S or W, I would expect to see an X somewhere in this area. But again, there's a line cutting it in half. So I'm going to put the X right on the line. It's kind of like it's sitting on a fence. I'm not sure if the X's are all here or here or both places. I don't know. I just know there's an X somewhere in that area. We're done diagramming at this point. The question is, is there enough information in this picture, in these premises, to absolutely guarantee this? Well, some W are not M. What I would need to see, there we go, what I would need to see is an X absolutely for certain in this crescent-shaped area. Well, I see an X here, but it's not absolutely for certain that it's inside the crescent-shaped area. It's sitting on that fence. Maybe it's here. Maybe it's there. I don't know. The premises are not absolutely guaranteeing the conclusion. That tells me it's an invalid argument. Okay. I'm going to jump in. All right. Paul's going to be here. So may I jump in Please. and add a little sure. bit? Sometimes it helps to hear something explained in a different way. And so I'm going to look at what Mark did. And, you know, the first premise says some students are, million some students are millionaires. So if these are all the students in the universe and these are all the millionaires in the universe, then if some students are millionaires, then there's some individuals that are in both classes. They're in this overlap between students and millionaires. They belong both to the student class and to the millionaire class. But there's not enough information to place the X here or here, so we straddle the fence. We put it on the line, and we just understand that when the X straddles the fence, it's on the line. We don't have enough information to place it over here or over here, and so the X might be here, might be here. That's why he placed it on the line. We see that some students are women, so we look at the category. This W represents all the women in the universe, all the students in the universe. There must be some individuals in the overlap region between that, that includes those who are both students and women. Mark put it on the line. He straddles the fence because we don't have enough information to put an X here or here. We know there's an X in this region, but we don't know what side of the line it's on. So he puts the X on the line. And now we look, and we have all the information from the premises entered into the diagram. We've not entered the conclusion into the diagram. And we ask ourselves, is that enough information to guarantee the truth of the conclusion? If that information is correct, must the conclusion be true? The conclusion says there's some individuals in the W category that are not in the M category. So we look at the W category that's outside the M category. That's what he meant by the crescent-shaped area. The area outside the W category that's not in the M category. I should say the area in the W category that's outside the M category. 
we aren't sure there's any individuals in there. This X might be in, on this side of the line or on this side of the line, so we are not guaranteed that there's someone in the W category that's outside the M category. Since the diagram doesn't guarantee an individual in the W category outside the M category, the argument is invalid, as he said. Very good. I did. Okay. That's it. Okay.